السلام عليكم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذب الثمود كذب الثمود بطغواها أشقاها
فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقيا فكذبوه فعقروها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف ولا يخاف ولا يخاف عقباها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ود دعك ربك وما قال ولا لا خيرة خير لك من لولا والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قال ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولن سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم 
السلام عليكم جزء اود لايك تو انفورم ايفري ون اي ريسايتد ود تو قراءات حفص اند ورش ان شاء الله سو يو كان فور يو انفورميشن ان شاء الله ثانك يو السلام عليكم فتح الله لك May Allah continue to bless Qari Anas as Abu as Umar radiallahu an told Abu Bakr at'abta man ba'dak because Qari Anas he has another appointment he won't be here for Salat al-Maghrib so you're going to get downgraded for the prayer inshallah but uh, may Allah bless him and, and, and increase him inshallah in this world and in the akhirah as you know uh, on behalf of ICCP we'd like to welcome uh, all of our guests and express our excitement of having a uh, co-chairing uh, an event with uh, Zawiya Foundation of DMV. As you know, we had Imam Fode Drame uh, visit us before the month of Ramadan. And, you know, the Sahaba, they said, we never rejoice more than when we heard the Prophet ﷺ say that Al-Mar'u Ma'man Ahab, or Anta Ma'man Ahbab, there's two different hadith. That you are with the one who you love. And so, mashallah, because we love Imam Fode, so he keeps coming back, inshallah. He's going to keep coming back to the DMV area. He's going to keep coming back to ICCP. Inshallah, Allah will gather us in the Akhirah just as He has gathered us in this world. Inshallah, He'll keep us all together, both in this world and to the next. Uh, at, this, at this point, we'd like to invite uh, Aisha Azimi. She's one of our community members at ICCP and also part of running uh, Zawiya Foundation of DMV. So she'll introduce Imam Fodeh, inshallah. Jazakumullah uh, khair, Imam Rafai and Kari Anas for the recitation. Alhamdulillah, I have the very unique um, and once again honor and privilege of introducing, reintroducing Imam Fode uh, back to the ICCP community. Uh, my name is Aisha and like Imam Rafai mentioned, I am part of the ICCP uh, community and also the Zawiya Foundation of the DMV. Um, and I would like to just refer to the uh, Ramadan and the Quran, number, uh, the volume two. Uh, and, and my introduction response to uh, Imam Fode, inshallah. And the book uh, is also available on Amazon as well as many other publications if you all are interested in reading more. Um, so Imam Fode uh, Drame is a linguist, a Quranic exegete, a teacher to many of us in the room. He's a father of five, an international speaker, and a humanitarian at the forefront of a number of community initiatives. In Vancouver, British Columbia in 2005, he established the Zawiya Foundation, which is a nonprofit charity founded on his vision for humanity. There, he also founded Hussein Knowledge House for school-aged children, uh, and also that is Vancouver's only independent Muslim school. And his most recent undertaking is the creation of Messina Publications, which is a project dedicated to printing and publishing all of his written works, whether in English, Arabic, or hieroglyphics. And at the forefront of these writings, uh, is the magnum opus, which is a full exegesis of the uh, glorious Quran. And Imam Fode's work, whether through his foundation or his writings, is particularly concerned with the building blocks for the construction of human character, which is the most important subject matter of the Quran. And he teaches that it is through the character that God loves and is loved by human beings, and that when God loves something, he gives that person um, unfettered access to his infinite wisdom and knowledge. And, Alhamdulillah, I would like to invite Imam Fode to share um, some very pertinent and time-relevant uh, uh, remarks about this uh, unique period following Ramadan in the blessed month and how we can remain steadfast and aware as we are continually tested uh, and um, as we move forward. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.
Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Nehmeduhu ve nesta'inuhu ve nestağfiruhu ve nestehdihi ve na'udhu bihi min şururi enfusina ve min seyyiyyati a'malina men yehdihillah fela mudilla lehu ve men yudlilhu felen tecide lehu veliyen murşiden ve salat ve selam el etemmen el ekmelen el ecmelen el a'taran ala seyyid el sakalayn ve imam el kavneyni seyyidina ve mevlana muhammedin ve ala alihi el tayyibin ve ala ashabihi el kiram el mağavir ومن اهتدى بهديه واتبع سنته وما هجته الغراء البيضاء الى يوم الدين والجزاء وبعد I think um, just as uh, the lecture was introduced as a follow up on Ramadan <coughs> And um, as well as the theme of Masaib al-Insan in Makaid al-Shaytan, that was the actual title of the of the tour, the plight of human beings from the machination of Shaytan, meaning the the ways in which Shaytan brings uh, tribulation and trials into human beings' lives. I think it's very important that um, uh, we all become aware of these machinations of shaitan. <coughs> because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells Adam and his children that in the shaitan lakum aduun fattakhiduhu aduwa but shaitan is an enemy to you therefore take him as an enemy that is not only that he is an enemy who say take him as an enemy in the shaitan lakum aduun fattakhiduhu aduwa but let's define what an enemy is and if somebody is your enemy, what does that mean? Shaitan being an enemy of the human being, it simply means that anyone who is unhappy when good happens to you and is happy when Ill happens to you, that's what's called an enemy. Mm. Who loves uh, harm for you and hates benefit for you. That's the definition of an enemy. In tamsasukum hasanatum tasuhum. Wa in tusibukum sayyiatun yafrahu biha. Allah says. In them sasukum hasanatun tasuhum when hasana something good happens to you uh, they feel bad tasuhum wa in tusibukum sayyi'a when wrong and harm happens to you yafrahu biha they are happy that's what an enemy is so anybody who is in that relationship with you is definitely an enemy the one who hates your khair and loves Yoshar. This is what Shaitan is for us. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's important that you know your enemy, so that you can safeguard yourself and protect yourself. <clears throat> That's why God clearly tell Adam and us that in the Shaitan lakum adu. Shaitan doesn't love the khair 
of Bani Adam and love Sharri for them instead. So now the khair that Allah gave Adam, which Allah placed him in Jannah, of course, Shaitan doesn't want that khair for Adam and his children, so he did everything possible to get him out of it, to bring him to misery and, and suffering. That's what an enemy is, who loves misery and suffering for you and hates um, prosperity and happiness for you. So if you are happy, your enemy is sad. If you are sad, your enemy is happy. <laughs> it's always happened like that. <clears throat> so Allah said to Sayyidina Adam, alayhi salatu wassalam, inna hada aduwa laka wali zawjik, fala yukhrijannakuma min al jannat fatashqa, inna laka alla tajua fiha wala ta'ara, وَأَنَّكَ لَا تَزْمَعُ فِيهَا وَلَا تَضْحَى A foe putting Adam in Jannah and Hawa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam, إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوُّ لَكَ This shaitan is an enemy for you. Well, an enemy also for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you are enemy of Allah's friend, naturally also Allah's enemy. That's what it is. Uh, your, f- your, your friend's enemy becomes your enemy, and your friend's friend also naturally should be your friend. No. So Allah, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you take Allah's friend as an enemy, then Allah becomes your enemy. Allah said to Sayyidina Musa about Fir'aun, Ya khudhu aduhu li wa aduhu lah. That the basket in which Sayyidina Musa was, will be taken by somebody who is an enemy to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an enemy to him in Sayyidina Musa. That's how loyal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to his awliya, to those that he loves. That if he loves someone, uh, is he loves you all the way. That anyone who hates you, Allah is against him. That anyone who loves you also, Allah definitely will love, will love them as well. And vice versa also. If you love Allah, truly love Allah, then you also should become the same way. That you love whoever loves Allah, and also you make an enemy of whoever doesn't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said to Sayyidina Adam, Inna hadha aduhu laka wali zawjik. This shaitan is an enemy to you and your wife and your partner. So both of you. Aduhu lak wali zawjik. Fala yukhrijannakuma min al jannah. Don't let him expel you, be a cause for you to get out of the paradise, out of the garden. فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا نُونُ التَّوْكِيد Emphasize, do not let him get you out of the garden. فَتَشْقَى You're going to be miserable. Misery. That is our, our, our lot in coming down to this earth. فَتَشْقَى فَتَشْقَى because in this garden, uh, you will not suffer from hunger. You will not suffer from lack of clothing. And that in this garden, you will not feel thirsty. You will not be thirsty. No will you be exposed to sunlight. That means you'll be sheltered. So Allah said, I'm going to take care of all your needs. All your, you don't have to toil and strive and struggle for just for your livelihood. I'll take care of all of that. Uh, no hunger, no lack of clothing, no thirst, uh, uh, shelter, all this is provided for you. So therefore, yes, you concentrate on just remembering me. Remember me, that's all. And all this is guaranteed for you. So that was the pact, the agreement that Sayyidina Adam had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he warned him, don't let shaitan take you out of this na'ma, this khair, 
this happiness you are in. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ ذِي نَعْمَةٍ مَحْسُودٍ As you know, everyone who is blessed is a subject, an object of envy and jealousy. So don't let shaitan out of hasad. That's why they say that hasad, envy and jealousy, is the first sin committed by the creation. Yes. Uh, the, the, the attitude of shaitan towards Adam was, has, was driven by hasad. Al-Hasad wal kibr So all the uh, all the vices goes back to two main vices which are kibr, pride, al-Hasad and envy. So all sins stem from these two. Al-Hasad wal kibr And it started with uh, Iblis towards Adam he was, if he, he acted arrogantly towards Adam, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ana khayrun minhu, khalaqtani min nari wa khalaqtahu min teen. I am better than Adam because you created me from fire and him from clay. That's kibur, that's arrogance. So these are the, the roots of, root of all evil. Arrogance, pride, and hasad and envy and jealousy. He said to Adam, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ana khayrun minhu, I am better than him. Allah said to him that, then get down from here. Fama yakunu laka an tatakabbara fiha. You have no right to act arrogantly in here, in my presence. So I expel him. That is to say that if you, have, if you carry an atom of arrogance in your heart, you will never enter God's presence. You will not. Even if you put your forehead on the ground a million times a day. No. If there's a size, atom size of kibur in your heart, you will not enter Allah's presence. That's why he banished Iblis because of the Kibur. فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ So نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ These are the things that we need to struggle with. We need to work on, working on our hearts. And remove these vices, uh, Because on the one hand, if you carry these characteristics, envy and hasad, they are what they call muhbitatul amal. These are the characteristics that destroy good deeds. So on the one hand, you're doing good deeds. On the other hand, you're losing them because of your character. So all the years, because Iblis live. He worshipped Allah for hundreds of years. All those worship came to nothing in a moment. My brothers and sisters, think about it. All those good deeds that is done over the years because of one misconduct, because of behaving, because of carrying him arrog- himself arrogantly, he lost everything. Imagine what happened to the Sahabas, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that one day two Sahabas, they kind of had a heated exchange in the presence of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they raised their voice. <laughs> Just that. And the warning came from God, to the Sahabas, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti al-nabi, wa la tajharu lahu bilqawli, la jahari ba'dikum li ba'd. An tahbata a'amalukum, wa antum la tashu'u. O you who believe, don't raise your voices over the voice 
of the Messenger of Allah. And don't call him the way you call one another, you know, so and so. Allah said, otherwise, your deeds, your deeds will become nullified. And tahabat a'amalukum. You don't even know. You think that you have so many good deeds? There's nothing. Because of your bad character, because of your misconduct, your salah, your fasting, your zakah, all goes to nothing. So that is the danger of arrogance and pride. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah says, Al-kibriya'u rida'i wal-azamatu izari faman naza'ni fihima qadaftuhu fi nari wa la ubali. That Allah says, kibriya, arrogant being grandiosity, is my own dress. That means only me have the right to that. It's my quality. Wal-Azamat, magnificence. Izari is my clock. Faman naza'ni fihima. If you contend with me, I'll throw you in the fire and I do not care. So you cannot contend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his qualities. So that is the danger of kibr. Hasad, envy and jealousy also another principle, vice, that we all need, need to struggle to work hard to do tazkiyah to nafs, to purify our souls from these vices. If you feel a sense that there's hasad in your heart, you work on it, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal you from this disease. It's a, it's a sickness that will destroy you unless you take care of it. Because the assumption, when somebody has, has envy towards another, but the assumption is that that person is saying that I don't agree that God gives so-and-so what he's given to so-and-so. So you're putting yourself on equal par with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah's blessing. He gave it to whom he wants. What right do you have to say, God cannot give so-and-so this? Or so and so this, or so and so this. It's Allah's. He can do whatever He wants with it. So you are putting yourself on par with Allah subhanahu wa That's the danger in hasad. That's the underlying assumption. If at all, if somebody is, has something good that you love for yourself, the best thing is that you also work hard. You also ask Allah to give you the same thing. Instead of wanting that thing to move away from that person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is actually a positive hasad, la hasada illa fisnatain, the hadith in Bukhari, that envy or emulation is not allowed except in two things. So productive competition, positive competition. Somebody who Allah has blessed with wealth and is spending this wealth in the word of Allah day and night. And you also, you can you wish, oh Allah, I wish you gave me what you gave so that I also can spend the way he does in your way. That's a good hasad. Or oh, rajulun atahu Allahul Quran or oh, a man that Allah has given him Qur'an in knowledge and he read Qur'an day and night, in and out. You can also have a good envy saying that Allah, if you can give me Qur'an as you did to so and so, so that I also can worship you day and night. That's a positive hasad. That brings prosperity and progress among us. Instead of wishing that somebody loses what has been given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So these are the two motives behind shaitan's action against human beings. Envy and pride. We see that we have seen the ayah that he says that I am better than Adam because I am made of so and so and Adam is made of clay. He thought that that betterness depends on your physical constitution. And betterness doesn't depend on that. It depends on the quality of your soul, on your ruh. Because if it, if it depended on the body, then Allah will have said that I'm going to make a human being from clay. When I make him from clay, make sujood for him. He didn't say that. He said, I'm going to make a human being out of clay. When I blow my spirit into him, then make sujood. So the sujood is not for the body of Adam, but for the spirit of God that is in him. Keep that in mind. The spirit in him. That was the one that was recognized by their sujood. So Iblis got it wrong. He got it wrong. Although he didn't get the instructions. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَجِدِ When I put him together and I breathe my spirit into him, then fall down in prostration to him. So the sujood indeed was for the spirit of God that has been infused into Adam. Keep that in mind. It's the ruhaniya, not the bashariya. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants khair for someone, when you meet a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will highlight his ruhaniya to you and cover his bashariya to you. If he wants no good for you, he'll show you their basharia and hide their, their ruhaniya from you. Meaning that Allah will show you their, their spiritual presence and hide their physical presence. So that your focus is on the ruh side of a human being and not their physical entity. So that ruh, that's what they made the prophets prophets, the messengers messengers, the saints the saints. Not their physical presence, of course. And that was the mistake that, uh, that Iblis made. Let not make the same mistakes, all of us. And judge somebody because of the way they look. Instead of looking, seeing beyond the look and looking at the spirit behind the body. Ar-ruh, wala zat. Fa'idha nafaqtu fihi min ruhi, faqa'u lahu sajidi. When I breathe my spirit into him, then make sujood. So his argument is wrong. It's comparing fire and clay. It wasn't about fire and clay. It's about what fire or clay carries in them. The inner and not the outer. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa aliwanikum walaki yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'amalikum. Allah does not look at your forms and your colors. Your forms, whether you are a male or a female, that's a form. Whether you are tall or short. These are forms. This is a matter to Allah. Allah doesn't look at it, ever. If Allah looks at you, he looks at you, but not look at your form. He doesn't see it ever. He sees your heart and your actions. But Allah looks at your hearts. What is in your heart? There is khair in your heart. There is iman in your heart. Is there love in your heart? Is there goodness in your heart? Allah looks at that. 
and your actions. But start with the heart. Goodness goes in the heart and then is manifested by the hands, your body. So, khulubikum wa a'malikum. So, this is the fundamental mistake made by Iblis and been repeated by so many people, human beings too. They judge people based on what they think. You don't see the spirit that is in that person. You only see his body. You don't know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invested in that particular individual. That's why they say that (coughs) Zafar al-Sadiq Allah be pleased with him, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through Sayyidina Hussein. His, one of his students was Abu Hanifa, the founder of Hanafiya Madhab. When the Abu Hanifa came to visit Jafar al-Sadiq, so, so while after greeting and they were talking, they said. He said to Abu Hanif, I had that قَدْ سَمِيدُ أَنَّكْ تَقِيس فَلَا تَقِيس فَإِنَّ أَوَّلْ مَنْ قَاسْ إِبْلِيس قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارِ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ دِينِ He said that I had that you, you, you compare uh, قياس, you use قياس uh, قياس means to compare two things and draw a conclusion out, out of a comparison. Qiyas is a fiqh method. He said, do not use Qiyas. Because the first person who used Qiyas ever was Iblis. He said, <laughs> he said fire and water and compare them. And say, okay, this one is better, this one is uh, better, this one is lesser. So, awwal man qas Iblis. I just tell you the danger of Qiyas. Of the Qiyas, but that's a good Qiyas. <clears throat> but qiyas, of course, if you qiyas body to body, which is fire, and these are two, two, two material things, uh, but beyond that, which is beyond qiyas, is the roh. No qiyas applies to the roh. That, that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives unto a person. So this is um, the mistake that was made at the beginning of human beings' history between Adam and Iblis. So we should not fall into the same mistake that Iblis made and judge people based on what we know about them, based on analogy and comparison. There's a lot of danger in that. <clears throat> so we're coming back to Masaibul Insan Min Makaidi Shaitan. That enmity that originated from the beginning and continues till now, the invisible war that's going on between Iblis and his children and Adam and his children. So that war <clears throat> is centered around one important point. And that important point is a remembrance of God. Dhikr. Because human beings' happiness all depends on dhikr. Human beings' misery all depends on forgetfulness. As-sa'adatu wa shakawa Kilahuma murtabitani bid dhikr wa nisyan La izal insanu sa'idan ma dama dhakiran wa yashqa ida nasi 
human being will continue to be happy as long as he is in remembrance. When he forgets, he falls into misery instantly. So the war is here. Shaitan wants you to forget. And your struggle is not to forget. To stay in remembrance. All the moments. Because one moment of forgetfulness can be very costly. I'm not saying a minute, I'm not saying an hour, I'm not saying a day. I'm saying a moment of forgetfulness can be very, very costly for you. Like the famous saying of Junaid al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah, he said, if you assume that a person was concentrated on God for 60 years, but for a moment he turned away from God, what he loses in that moment outweighs that entire 60 years of presence in that moment. And that's not exaggerated because Adam forget only for a moment. And look what happened, he's here. He came down. It was a moment of forgetfulness. وَلَقَدْ أَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِلْ لَهُ عَزْمًا Nasiya. Allah said, we made a covenant, made a promise with Adam of all time. He forgot. In the moment he forgot, he ate the tree. He forgot. But he will not eat the tree if he was in remembrance, naturally. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يزني الزاني هنا يزني وهو مؤمن ولا يسرق الصارق هنا يسرق وهو مؤمن that one will not commit adultery one is committing adultery while he is a believer I mean he, while he is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe he forgets in that moment that moment he stops being a believer for a moment commits the, 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 the sin, and then remembers again. So shaitan wants you to push you to that moment. You forget and he pushes you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you are in tribulation. Because when you cut off, a sin cuts you off from Allah. And when you are cut off from Allah, then that is a big problem. al qati min Allah. al inqita to break from God. So that line of connection is there until you forget. The moment you forget, it cut, it breaks. In that moment of breaking away, then Shaitan takes over. He controls you then. He cannot control you as long as you are connected. So he has to make sure he breaks you away from God first. Once he breaks you away, then he takes over. He doesn't want you to come back either. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَسُدَّكُمْ أَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ السَّلَاةِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُ I'll explain in the, the reasoning behind the prohibition of drinking and gambling. Only one reason. It's not because of anything else. Because it makes you forget. If gambling doesn't make you forget, Allah will allow us to gamble. If drinking doesn't make you forget, Allah will allow us to drink. But the reason why it's prohibited because it makes you forget. That's the only reason. Whatever, whatever makes you forget Allah, that should be prohibited. Allah said, Satan wants to bring enmity between you and, and rancor in, in, in wine and gambling. 
and oysuddakum. That's where the point is. He wants to block you and vikri Allah from remembering Allah. Wa anis salah and from prayer. So that's the point. He wants, to, he wants to drink, not because drinking is itself is a problem, but because drinking leads, he knows what, what, so it's a sequence. He push you to drink because that will make you forget. And when you forget, he will block you from, from coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll take you over now. So this is the logical reason behind these prohibitions. Anything that makes you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be prohibited. So you suddakum and dhikri lahi. You start with dhikr. Dhikr Allah. Because prayer is not a prayer without dhikr. Prayer is prayer because of dhikr. We pray. Actually, all our worship is to help us remember God. From prayer to zakat, to hajj, to fasting, they all are for one reason, to keep us in remembrance. But Allah diversify the worship, make it in different ways, so that human being gets, it gets monotonous and bored if he's doing just one thing, the same thing all the time. So Allah make worship in many, many forms. But for one reason, it's all about keep you in remembrance of God and keep you connected to God. That's why God says about Hajj. Hajj is also about dhikr. فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَذُكُرُوا اللَّهَ فَذِكْرِكُمْ أَفَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا When you perform your rituals of Hajj, then remember Allah. That is the purpose. You go to Mina, you go to Safa and Marwa. All this for dhikrullah in the end. So they, they will have no meaning if there's no remembrance of Allah in it. So, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا When you perform your hajj done, now go to the, to the point. Remember Allah as much as you remember your, your parents. O more. O more. O ashadda dhikra. Remember Allah more than your parents. Because you're usually a human being. That's the, those are the people that you remember the most. <clears throat> your parents. Especially as, as a child. Because you depend completely upon your parents. If you need water, you call on your mom. I may I want water, I may I want food, I may I want this. So you should be to Allah the same way. If you are hungry, ask Allah. If you are thirsty, ask Allah. Whatever happens, remember Allah. Just like a helpless baby remembers the parents. And we are all helpless. <laughs> we just don't know. We are all those babies that we, we, we has grown in body, we are still babies in the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remain that baby to Allah. Be a baby. Be, come back a baby. Come back to being a baby <clears throat> as you were at first. You become a saint. That's what saints are. Because you have become a baby again. So the statement of Sayyidina Isa that you will not enter paradise unless you become babies again. So, until you become, turn back to being a baby. And that is true. Unless you go back to your fitrah. You can't enter Jannah, of course. You're not in your fitrah. In your sound disposition. That's what it means. As babies are in their fitrah. Kullu mawludin, you're the fitrah. That every child is born on the fitrah. The moment you forget, your fitrah begins to change. But children, babies, naturally retain their fitrah because they are in remembrance, naturally. Until they grow a little bit later, they begin to forget. Because when a child is born, until a certain age, they are more closer to where they came from 
down to this wall. The child came from somewhere. Alamul Ghaib. The unseen. That's where the child came from. Because the womb is part of the Ghaib. It's an extension of the unseen in the human body. And in the womb, God created this miracle of life. Because the womb is part of the unseen, of the ghayb. And the five things that Allah talks about, five, al ghayb, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, commenting on the ayah in the end of Surah Al-Uqman, Inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'a wa yunazidu al-ghaytha wa ya'lam ma fil arham wa ma tadri nafsum ma da taksibu ghada wa ma tadri nafsum bi ayy ardin tamut. That with Allah is the knowledge of the hour, the final hour, Il Musa, and the knowledge of rain, and the knowledge of what is in the wombs, and what are you going to do tomorrow, and where are you going to die. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, commenting on that ayah, خَمْسٌ مِنَ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمْهُنَّ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Five things are of the unseen. No one knows them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he counted these five. So as I was saying, that's why I said that the womb is also part of the ghaib. وَيَعْلَمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ So when a child is born, it's closer to the world of unseen than to our world. So they naturally attain their fitra and their remembrance of Allah naturally. So children are actually saints that are small. And they lose their sainthood as they grow in this problematic world. <clears throat> so when they grow, they begin to forget. They forget and they become one of us. So they have to again go back with the process of remembering Allah to return back to their fitra again. By the action of dhikr. So that is the importance of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your happiness depends on it and your misery also depends on it. <clears throat> so therefore, shaitan works on many, many ways of making you forget. That can be through your children because shaitan or sometimes when he cannot attack you directly, cannot make you forget, he will go somewhere else. Maybe go through your child, or go through your wealth, or go through your spouse, or go through your friend, to get to you, to make you forget. Like the story that Ibn al-Jawzi writes in, that a group of people were gathered together for remembrance of God, for dhikr. And shaitan came and went around trying to break them up. He wasn't able to. They are very, very focused and concentrated on their worship. Okay. So when he failed to spoil their, their vicar for them, their gathering, there was another separate gathering. Not far away from there. But they are not gathered together for vicar. They are just gathered together for companionship, to eat and drink together and, and chat. Okay. He has an idea. He said, okay, let me go and clear the problem there. So he went in the other group. After some time, very soon, he, he, he started a fight among them. They began to fight. So those who are doing the when they see this group fighting, they break up their thicket to go and stop them from fighting. So what <laughs> happened? The vicar was destroyed. So shaitan comes in many, many ways. If he cannot attack you directly, he'll go through someone. That's why, as we know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you are fasting, somebody comes and tries to fight with you, do not respond. Because shaitan is behind that person trying to spoil your prayer for you, your fasting for you. Don't look at the person. Look who is behind them. So be wise. And clever. <laughs> I'm smart. Yeah. So look at the person. Look who is pushing the person against you. If you respond, 
then he got what he wanted. He forgot Allah, he break your, he break your fast. Because you can break your fast by arguing. إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ سَوْمِ أَحْدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُصْ وَلَا يَفْسُقْ وَلَا إِجْحَلْ وَإِذَا شَاتَمَهُ أَحْدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ فَلِيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَعِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of you is fasting. Do not profess obscenities. Do not transgress. Do not argue. If somebody wants to fight with you, insult you, abuse you verbally, just respond by saying, I am fasting. Don't insult back. And don't fight back. Just to safeguard your good deeds. It's one thing to do good deeds. It's a separate thing to preserve your good deeds. And that's more difficult. Doing it is much easier than keeping it. As they said, it's easier to conquer than to maintain your conquest. It's easier to do good deeds than to safeguard them, to preserve them. So in the end, you work for nothing. You're just working and losing. Working, gaining and losing. A believer should be very wise. Al-Mu'min Kayis. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the believer is Kayis. He's very smart and wise. When you gain something, you, keep, you maintain it. Don't let Iblis come around and spoil your good deeds for you. What time is Maghrib? Remember over. It's Maghrib time now. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim. وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم إنا نسلك موجبات رحمتك وعظائم مغفرتك والسلامة من كل إثم والغنيمة من كل بر والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد الذي ملأت عينه من جمالك وقلبه من جلالك فأصبح فرها مؤيدا والحمد لله على ذلك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين ورحمتك يا أرحم الله I'm told that we have some overachievers here who fasting in Ramadan wasn't good enough for them. So, so they're following it with six days from Shawwal. So we're going to offer some dates for those who are fasting, inshallah, in the cafe. In the meanwhile, we'll call the Adhan for Salat al Maghrib.
Straighten the lines. Timusaf al awwal complete the first row before starting the next row. Akshaw fi salatikum. Iqama. Iqama salam. الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يسر هل في ذلك قسم الذي حجر ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد وثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون ذي الأوتاد الذين طغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيها الفساد فصب عليهم ربك سوط عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتأكلون التراث أكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعيد اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجيء يومئذ بجهنم يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأنا له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب عذابه أحد ولا يوثق وثاقه أحد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة أن ترجعي إلى ربك ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله 
الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حميدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن شاء الله we'll allow a couple minutes for prayer of sunnah if you wish and then we'll reconvene of course the time is short so we'll have a few minutes uh, for a couple of questions and then inshallah we'll proceed to the barn building where we'll be serving dinner inshallah.
scrunches on that. When people are eating, no, or, or, or at the door, as people are walking out, we can just okay, give it to you. Um, give it to Aisha. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> That's okay. He can come for it. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I see everyone's getting to know each other, mashallah, that's wonderful. Um, so we just, we wanted to give all the announcements now instead of taking from Sheikh Fodeh's time. So Mariam wanted to uh, say a little bit about Zawiya and to welcome all of you, so please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Jazakallah al khair for coming and bringing your light this evening. Um, uh, and thank you, Aisha and Imam Rafai, for hosting us here at ICCP. We're very, very grateful for the warm welcome and the space here and for our return here, alhamdulillah. Um, I just wanted to give a couple words on the Zawiya Foundation and the DMV. Um, of course, we are an organization started by Imam Fode Drame about a year ago now. We had our anniversary this Ramadan, super blessed, alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen. And um, we pray that you benefited, and that I know you benefited from the, from the insights tonight, but we pray that you know, it enters into your heart and continues into the rest of your life past these walls. And I mean, and we do um, invite you to continue this journey, both inwardly and outwardly, with the Zawiya Foundation, with a lot of our other gatherings as well, as we look forward in partnering with ICCP. And then we also have our weekly gatherings of remembrance of Allah, and what good is amassing knowledge if it doesn't transform us internally? So to put the application, we do invite you to, enjoy, uh, to join us on Thursdays um, and follow us on Instagram or Facebook if you want to learn more about those gatherings. Or if you want to join our WhatsApp group, just come up to Aisha or I and we'll add you to that. So inshallah, you can stay in the loop. And then we obviously, of course, um, stream those if you can't come out because I know some of you are coming from afar, alhamdulillah, and may Allah bless every step that you took to get here tonight, alhamdulillah. Um, so with that, I will actually hand it to Imam, and we'll open it up for a couple questions before, I know you all are probably hungry if you've been fasting, may Allah accept it. Um, we're going to take a couple questions uh, right now. Yes, thank you for that. And of course, um, this journey does not end tonight with Imam, alhamdulillah, and the DMV. We have two more gatherings that we are super excited about. Tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be meeting at Al Khairat. So that's in Oxon Hill, Maryland. And that will be uh, spe specifically dedicated to Dhikr of Allah, Remembrance of Allah, in which Imam Fode Drame will lead us in the recitation of the Illuminated Remembrance of God. And I really welcome you to come to that. It'll be very exciting. And then we'll spend the evening at Al Khairat and then have dinner there as well, inshallah, for those who are fasting. And then on Friday, we have the final send off khutbah. So Imam will be doing the khutbah at Make Space. And for those who you are familiar, Make Space is located in Alexandria, Virginia. And they meet at a firehouse out there um, for their Jama khutbah. So if you want to learn more, please follow us on Instagram or Facebook. We'll also. Um, share some insights on our WhatsApp group as well, so, um, inshallah. Um, yes, so that's at the firehouse, the Make Space Firehouse on Friday as well. So inshallah, bismillah, let us continue with the Q&A. Yeah, bismillah. I don't know. Assalamu alaikum, Imam. So Hello. good to have you and your family here. I'm so happy to see you Thank again. Thank you. Um, my question is, you were talking about forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And as we get older, <laughs> some of us are more forgetful. So I'm glad you mentioned that. But more particularly, I wanted to ask you about patients with Alzheimer's and mental illness. Mm -hmm. So how we can protect, how should we protect? I mean, I think I know, but I would like to hear you. Uh, from you on how we can help protect um, our younger ones who are for becoming at that age of forgetfulness and also um, patients who with Alzheimer's and mental illness. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. 
وكفى وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد يا ام just like uh, imam malik rahimahullah says um whoever um makes habit of remembering Allah in their youthfulness and speaking the truth will not uh, be fall victim of forgetfulness when they become old. <laughs> That's Imam Malik's uh, remarks. But of course, um, if you definitely develop the habit of dhikrullah in the proper sense of the word, it will preserve your memory for you when you attain old age. There's no doubt, there's no doubt about that. Uh, yes, there's uh, something that is, 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 is uh, has empirical evidence that people who are dhikrin do not forget, do not fall prey to those type of uh, senility, senile sicknesses in the old. So inshallah, that's the first thing. Let's, let's make that a habit. Let's make dhikr a habit uh, when we are young. And when we get old, Allah will help us preserve and protect our memory. <coughs> An example of that is the story of Sayyidina Umar, ta'ala anhu. When he was, as you know, he was assassinated, he was stabbed uh, to death. But he didn't die, he died a few days, a few days later. During those three days, because he's bleeding profusely, and when they give him food, he comes out. Uh, but in, so he will lose his consciousness uh, because of that. But surprisingly, when they call Adhan, he wakes up completely. Yes. He becomes fully present. He prays that prayer and then laughs back. And to, because of, you know, he's bleeding and there's no food in his body. But he does not, prayer time. <laughs> so that's how dhikr is. If you make it a habit, you will not forget. But I mean, of course, inshallah, if, if, if um, uh, definitely requires patience with those who are in that situation. Uh, to you know, to care for them and um, sympathize with them, and of course ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that where they are today, maybe one day will be there. Keep that in mind, and so we should we should be bear with them. We should we should care for them, so that Allah can protect us, inshallah, from the same fate when we grow old. Mm. As Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam. Bismillahi wa rahmatullahi My name is Sultan Diego Suleiman. Um, Imam, I wanted to ask clarification on uh, fate and destiny um, because fate is determined by our free will and destiny is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already decreed from my understanding um, like in a pre-eternal or pre-existing. And so I wanted to see like with, with the difference between us being the masters of our faith and Allah being uh, in control of our destiny, can you kind of describe the, the, the interworkings of Allah's mercy? Because I also learned that the du'as is the secret weapons of the believers. Mm -hmm. So like if Allah decrees something to be for, for a mukmin, like his death, and uh, a loved one was praying for that person for a long life of prosperity, Allah can change his uh, opinion. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know if Allah can change his opinion, does that mean there's room for him to change our destiny? Um, even though he's in control of all knowing and down. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, uh, the grand question about uh, human beings free will and the will of God is a very long-standing uh, question. Um, yeah, human beings do have a free will because God said, we guide him to the two ways so he can choose which way he wants to go. 
for that free will, of course, he is within the will of God. Uh, so human, human beings have free will, but that is within the greater framework of God's will. So that human beings will cannot lie beyond God's will naturally, otherwise God will be, will be limited and, 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 and finite. <clears throat> so um, our, our, our will uh, consists of uh, uh, choosing what God has chosen for us or not accepting what God has chosen for us on us. So that is where our will plays. So when God created the heavens and the earth, as is in sort of a God said to them, come to me willingly or unwillingly. So there's a willingly or unwillingly. Hmm. Mean that either way you're going to come. But your choice is which way you come. You can choose to come by yourself or I will have to bring you. Hmm. So our free will lies in making that choice. Uh, but coming, you must come. Come. And I said to all of us, come, we are all going. But some of us are going willingly. Some of us are going unwillingly. They don't want, they don't want to meet Allah, so they are, they are pulling themselves back, but they have been dragged along. So everyone must come back to him. But there are those who come back to him, on their own free will. That's who can come back to him compulsively. And so that is for that. In terms of Allah changing destiny, so there are, our belief, the iman, is, is, is that we believe that there are Allah has written things for us. Mm. That is called taqdeer, qaddara. Inna kulla shayin khalaqnahu bi qadr. Allah says everything we created, we measure. So Allah measured your provision for you. He measured your, the length of your life as well for you. Uh, he measured your actions as well for I was talking about the five things that are of the unseen. <clears throat> so part of that, you don't know what, what you're going to do tomorrow because Allah has uh, created your actions as well that will manifest tomorrow. So be, 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 beside what is written for you, there is still his infinite mercy that lies beyond written. So our, our duty is to accept what is written for us and look forward to what lies beyond, his, his infinite matter lies beyond that. So if, that's why he say, say normally says that even if I see that my name written as uh, destined for Jahannam, I'll still ask Allah and won't lose hope because his rahmah extends beyond all what is written for you. So that is possible that Allah's other rahmah can overtake uh, uh, his, 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 his written, uh, his decree. As he said, Rahmati Sabaqat Ghadabi, that my Rahma has, over, has overtaken my anger. Mm. And the hadith, famous hadith in Bukhari, uh, that, uh, that when Allah uh, created the creation, that he wrote in a book that's with him above the throne, in the Rahmati Sabaqat Ghadabi. Uh, that my rahma has overtaken my anger. So let's keep that. That's what we believe in. No matter what happens, we still believe that Allah's rahma encompasses everything. <laughs> now? Barakallah. Another question before? Yes, uh, Maryam. Assalamualaikum. Um, I just have a quick question when you were talking about like the babies when they're born and they're them being closer to the unseen. Mm -hmm. Is there an age where then they are now closer to like what's that age where it kind of is like the crossover? Uh, the age of puberty when they be becoming adults. Yeah, so usually the age of it depends some is earlier, some is later but when they're becoming adult that's when they their, their link with the, with the unseen becomes weaker, and they're developing a stronger bond with the, the, this world. As you can see, all the adolescents struggle through that phase of transition from, you know, from innocence into, yeah. As this. <laughs> yes. So the nafs now is asserting itself 
at the expense of the roh, because the roh is stronger until puberty. Then the nerves get stronger from the yeah. No? No. Bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اشرح بالصلاة عليه صدورنا ويسر بها أمورنا وفرج بها همومنا واكشف بها غمومنا واقضي بها ديوننا وأصلح بها أحوالنا وبلغ بها آمالنا وتقبل بها توبتنا وآنس بها وحشتنا وارحم بها غربتنا واجعلها نورا بين أيدينا ومن خلفنا وعن أيماننا وشمائلنا ومن فوقنا ومن تحتنا وفي حياتنا وموتنا وفي قبرنا وحشرنا ونشرنا وظلا فوق رؤوسنا يوم القيامة حتى ترخلنا مدخلة وتأوينا إلى جواره الكريم مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وصحبه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بارك الله ممنا بارك الله When this is all done, you're all invited to go to the barn and to join us for dinner. There's just one last thing. If you, that was just a sip of what you could get at the retreat this summer, inshallah, that Imam Fode will be having in Vancouver. So please join us in Vancouver this summer, June 16th. And we'll pass out some of these uh, cards for you all. Jazakallah.